Hello everybody. Well, a lot to discuss on the major market themes, notably central bank decisions, especially the Fed and Brexit. Uh, the big event of the coming week is March 29th. Yes, Brexit deadline day has finally arrived. Uh, but before we get into all that, we'll quickly discuss the economic calendar and the corporate data on tap this week. So in terms of that economic calendar, I'd point to the German IFO on Monday. Let's see if businesses are feeling better this month. After all, China is doing a lot of stimulus, which might be stimulating some orders in Germany. Uh, in isolation, this should be good for the euro if we see some strength here. It's the RBNZ rate decision on Wednesday. Worth noting, New Zealand GDP came in line last week. So we tend to be the opinion the RBNZ isn't about to cut rates uh, like the RBA did in Australia. So perhaps the Aussie Kiwi pair want to watch given the, given the divergence in policy. Uh, there's US GDP on Thursday. If the Fed have got their calculations right about a slowdown, then you'd expect this to drop and be a headwind for the dollar and potentially US indices too. On Friday, it's supposed to be Brexit day unless it gets delayed. Could be some major moves in sterling, particularly to the downside if, in fact, we end on uh, leaving a no deal. Uh, but we'd expect it to be volatile um, all week, the pound that is. Then as far as corporate earnings next week, uh, the ones we'll be monitoring are the ones shown on the screen here. So if we, lead, if we just do a quick review of the Fed last week, quite a significant move by them. Uh, generally, the consensus here being that they were much more dovish than expected, completely capitulated on any right, uh, rate hikes at all. Uh, and so we know this from the dot plot. Uh, we've come all the way down from three or four to zero in 2019. So naturally, a uh, weaker dollar as a result of this, euro dollar pushing higher, not out of its range that it's been in for the last few months. Uh, so taken in isolation, this meeting from the Fed is bearish for the dollar. There's, there's almost no doubt about that. But if stock markets roll over soon, then the dollar likely gets haven flows. So that would actually be a, <clears throat> a, a bullish result um, of this latest Fed move for the dollar. Uh, why would the stock market roll over? Well, one indication was the late sell-off after the Fed decision, uh, which uh, initially stocks rallied, then went and reversed a lot of the earlier gains. So maybe uh, some thoughts there that the Fed put has been priced into markets with this massive run-up that we've had already this year and that we actually need rate cuts or QE4 to continue standing stocks higher. And if we don't get those things, then the markets roll over. That is a possibility. Um, the, the ECB also capitulating with no rate hikes this year. So that somewhat offsets the, the euro dollar situation. And if global growth does get worse, which signs from China is it will, um, although they are stimulating a lot, uh, then the ECB and other central banks will kickstart more stimulus. So back to the good old Brexit deadline. So to say it's a fluid situation would be a massive understatement. Um, just summarizing all of the recent uh, situation, probably I'll highlight the Burko ruling uh, on the third vote. So as we film this video, there is no third vote because it's substantially the same thing that was already offered to Parliament, which they voted down. Um, we've had the EU summit. The EU have in effect said that they can extend Article 50 beyond March 29th for a short period of time if the deal is voted for. But there's still no signs of majority in favour for the deal by MPs. Uh, so the assumption is that somehow we do have a third vote. Um, somehow it's changed enough perhaps uh, that it can be allowed by Burko or the government just rams it through somehow. Um, it probably gets voted down again, and then we're in for a long extension. But a long extension means uh, that the UK will be voting in EU elections, which no one really wants. Um, so all that being said, a no deal is alive and well, and that probably explains why we're forming what looks like a double top bearish reversal on the, uh, the pound dollar cable cable pair. So it's really that 133 to 134 zone. It's the, it's the resistance above. I think while we're below it, there's opportunities to sell into the uncertainty. Um, if we do crack above that resistance, well, then it's a different game. And we, you know, that would be a symbol of, of, of stabilization of the situation. I think that probably only happens when we get some confirmation of the, of the extension actually happening.
Thank you very much for watching. Good luck with trading this week. And if you want to see these videos as soon as they're released, please follow myself and LCG on YouTube and social media.